Welcome back to Rich Words Music, where today we're looking at this. It's the Rev G2 Overdrive pedal by Rev Amplification. Now, Rev are a Canadian amplifier and pedal building company, and you'll know them for their generator heads, their Dynamis heads, the Mini D20 and G20, plus their G range of pedals, which is spearheaded by the high gain G3 distortion. But the Rev G2 does the sound of the green channel, the crunch channel, on the Rev generator heads, whereas the G3, for example, does the purple high gain channel. Now, the G2 is what Rev call their most versatile of the drive pedals. So it has three different gain modes here. We've got an off switch, a blue, and a red. Now, when you have this switch set to off, the G2 gives you a full range boost, so it'll push your clean sounds into even more dirtier cleans. It'll fatten things up and give you some sparkle. Move it to the blue setting, and that's when you're kind of aping the green channel on the rev generator most authentically. Flick it across to the rev channel, and you get an even more pushed, drivier, gainier sound. You've got a volume control, a gain control, and a three band EQ on the pedal for bass, mids, and treble, and that's it. So there's a bunch of different sounds in this box, and what we're going to do is hear how it handles my Fender Telecaster, my Fender Stratocaster, and my Epiphone Les Paul. So we'll play a bunch of single coil riffs and a bunch of humbucker riffs across a series of my favorite genres, as we normally do. And just because I want to know if this pedal will do metal as well, we'll do some loops at the end, and I'll push it into drop D with the Les Paul and add in my Ibanez Tube Screamer Mini to see if we can chug. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna play a bunch of sounds now with the Rev G2 and we'll speak in more detail about it afterwards.
Okay then, so we've just been listening to the Rev G2 Overdrive pedal by Rev Amplification, and I hope you enjoyed the variety of tones and the different musical tests that I've been able to put this pedal through. And I have to say straight off the bat that Rev's claim that this is the most versatile of their drive pedals is fully backed up, in my opinion. This pedal did way more in terms of overall amounts of gain than the G3 and the G4 pedals. I've played all three of them, and with the Rev G2, you can cover the most different amount of genres very well indeed. Now, of course, the G3 and the G4 are specialized in the different high gain things that they do. But if you're looking for an overall pedal that does pretty much everything apart from metal, the G2 is probably going to be the one to go for. So let me tell you more about my specific thoughts on it in terms of the sounds and the build quality. And first off, I have to say this thing is built like a tank, just like I would expect from Rev based on everything else I know from them. It's made in Canada. It's a solid metal chassis. The controls, the switches, the pots all feel very good indeed. I could imagine that you could gig this thing relentlessly for years and years without problems. You could tour it, you could throw it in the back of a van, the back of a bus, or even into the hold of a plane every day, and it would still be good after years and years of live abuse and love. So full marks there to Rev for the build quality. So let's talk a little bit more about the sounds of the pedal then. And we'll kind of go through it the way I did the tones in the playing part. We'll go from the lowest gain through to the highest. So I started off with the drive switch in the middle, set to off, it has the lowest amount of gain that Rev offers, and Rev say this gives you a full range boost. And I was using that to push the clean sounds on the amp, not for too much drive, just to make things a little bit sparklier and a bit fatter, and to give a bit more life to my tepid clean tone, which I'd set on the amp for purposes of this video. So I pushed the volume a bit, I turned the drive pretty much all the way down, and with the Tele and the Strat, that worked pretty well, but with the Les Paul, you could notice straight away that even with the drive all the way down, we were getting some quite serious crunch going on. So if you want this as a clean boost for a Les Paul or a guitar with hot pickups, it's not gonna do what you want it to. Now, in terms of that clean pushed boost, I quite liked it for the Tele and the Strat, but I don't think that this is one of the main strengths of this pedal. And in fact, there are other pedals that I use regularly to get that kind of tone for myself when I'm playing in my own music, when I'm playing at home for fun. Pedals like the Greer Lightspeed and the Paul Cochran Timmy. Now they give my guitar a beautiful high-end sparkle and they're immensely characterful and they work very dynamically with my playing. And I don't think that the G2 does that. 
Like I said, I don't think that's the main target audience appeal of this pedal, but I just felt like the full range boost here didn't really bring that much extra for me. And it's something I would choose to do with different specialized pedals if I had the option. Now, if you've only got one pedal, it's this one and you need to do that, you can do it, but just be aware that in my opinion, there are better pedals out there for doing that. And this pedal really came alive for me when I flicked it up to the blue switch there, which is the authentic replication of Rev's green crunch channel on the generator amp head. Now this is the main setting, I would say, for the G2 pedal, the natural setting for it, and it really came alive for me there, especially with the single coils. Now with the Telecaster and the Strat, we did the classic rock very well there, we did the alt rock, we did the indie rock, and it just covered a wide variety of tonal ground. Now again, I want to talk about the three band EQ here. They're very, very powerful indeed. I often found myself cutting out a bit of bass, quite a lot of mids, and adding a bit of treble, but between the different guitars, I was moving it around here and there tinkering with it to get the best response from it and there was always the sound that I wanted in these three controls here so this EQ gets my full respect and my full marks for how it works it's very very good indeed and very very powerful now with the Les Paul on the blue setting I always felt that it was pushing more and more I always felt that it was a tiny bit too aggressive and some of the classic rock tones on the Les Paul I actually did on the off mode on the boost mode because it had enough drive for me absolutely to cover that kind of stuff because the Les Paul is so much hotter than the single coils it was really a different experience with this pedal and it's something that if you were moving between two guitars one with single coils and one with humbuckers you'd really have to pay attention to if you owned this pedal now, when I went to the red drive setting for the most aggressive sounds, I thought that the Tele and the Strat sounded very good indeed. It was a fat, modern, medium to high gain tone for me. I mean, for me personally, it was a very high gain tone because I don't play with that much gain, but it absolutely covered hard rock well. The G2 doesn't chug though, in my opinion. Even with the hotter Les Paul humbuckers, it doesn't quite have that modern, tight, thump and chuggy oomph that we would want. I had to use the Ibanez Tube Screamer Mini for that. Again, we're not quite in the territory of what the G2 is advertised for. If you want chugs with a rev pedal, you go for the G3, of course. But overall, everything from indie rock through to hard rock, alternative rock, and even the metal with the Tube Screamer sounded very good to my ears. Now, there's a couple of other thoughts that I want to give just about the flavor of the gain here. I feel that the Rev G2 very much has its own distinct personality and flavor when it comes to the gain. It sounds like a Rev, and that's an absolutely great selling point for Rev. If you love that Rev sound, you'll love this pedal. But for me, there's a couple of things that I just want to mention that didn't put me off so much, but just caught my eye. And they were things that I wanted to dial out for my personal taste. Now, the first would be that when I was on the off setting, the lowest gain mode, the pushed clean boost, I found that some of the notes, particularly with my Telecaster, decayed in a kind of fizzly sort of a way. And I didn't like that too much. I wasn't able to dial it out with the Tele. I was with the Strat and I was with the Les Paul. But with the Telecaster, there was just something at the back of my mind when I let a chord ring out that I didn't like that much. It's something that I've heard on other demos, for example, by Rabia Massad as well. So I can't really explain it with any more detail than that. But if it's something that you notice and you don't like, it's going to be a problem. If not, no bother carry on rocking away with it. And the other thing that I have to say is that on the blue and red modes, on the more aggressive modes, when you're pushing it with the gain, again, there was kind of an aggressiveness that for me personally doesn't suit my taste. Everything sounded absolutely great and this is in no way a criticism of the sound of the pedal. It's just that again, like with the pushed cleans, I know that there are other pedals out there that give me personally something more that I prefer. I generally prefer what we would refer to as transparent overdrive pedals a bit more and I think the Rev definitely gives you kind of a tonal shift when you activate it. It almost has sort of a more nasally tone than a transparent sound and it's a very aggressive pushed tone for me, a very modern tone indeed and perhaps I'm more of the old-fashioned classic player and that's what I didn't like so much. So if you love modern overdrive tones, you're really going to enjoy this very much. If you really like classic tones, there will be other pedals which will push you more in that 
direction naturally. I hope that's a useful comparison of the tones here. The best way, of course, to hear how it sounds is to play one for yourself or to listen to the different demos that are out there. There's no extra production on mine. I literally plug the pedal into the amp, which goes into the computer, and that's what you hear. I don't tweak it in post-production at all whatsoever afterwards, so you're really hearing pretty much what I heard too. But if you're interested in trying this pedal, I do suggest that you try it in person before giving out your money for it, because the revs they are their own thing, which is an amazing thing about them. But if you're perhaps looking for something else, then you might want to run it up against one of your other favorites just to see if it's going to work for you. So for my final point, then I just want to say in terms of price value for money, you get so many tones out of the Rev G2 that it is absolutely worth it if you dig those tones. Now at current time of filming, which is May 2021, the Rev G2 costs about 200 euros here in the European Union. I think that's about 200 pounds or 200 dollars in North America. So it's at the higher price range for an overdrive pedal. It's what we might class as a boutique overdrive pedal, but it's built so well and it does so many different sounds in a very, very good way that I would have no hesitation in recommending it for people who want that kind of thing. So that has been my view on the Rev G2 overdrive pedal. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope you've learned something about the way this pedal sounds. Now, if you're still watching, please subscribe to the Rich Words Music channel. There's many more videos about guitars and amps and pedals and cool people in the music industry. And there's a lot more to come. I've got many, many more plans for 2021 and beyond. But that's been it for today's video. I've been Rich for Rich Words Music and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.